But the vast majority of Titan is sort of a methane desert. And when it does rain, it's a real cloudburst and you have a huge flow over the surface. So we actually think that in terms of the ability of methane to erode and carve channels and valleys on Titan, it would be very similar to the ability of water to carve valleys on the Earth. One reason lakes are pooling in the north could be because that region is experiencing a very long rainy season. It takes 30 years for Saturn to go around the sun. So a year on Titan, four seasons on Titan takes 30 years. Each season is about seven years long. We think that there might be during the spring or the fall, you get increased rainfall, which means that whatever hemisphere has that season, actually you have a lot of lakes forming. But methane rains down differently than water, thanks to Titan's thick atmosphere and low gravity. Think of big drops, twice the size of raindrops on Earth, falling at a much slower speed, bump, bump, bump. But they'd be freezing cold, very, very cold if they hit your skin. But liquid methane is not liquid water. And anyone who would dare dive into a methane lake would be in for a nasty surprise. It's a rare find in our universe. A world, not Earth, that is home to a liquid. From a distance, Titan's methane lakes seem so familiar and inviting. But this is truly an alien place. First, the temperature of Titan's lakes is hundreds of degrees below zero. And assuming you could survive the cold, swimming in a methane lake would be a shocking experience for a totally unexpected reason. The density of liquid methane is much less than water, so you would be heavy in that, you would sink. I weigh 200 pounds. In water, my effective weight is very close to zero. In liquid methane, my effective weight would be 80 pounds. So imagine trying to tread water in a lake or a swimming pool with an 80-pound weight belt tied to you. That's going to be hard. That's what it would be like trying to swim in a lake in tight. Methane is so clear, divers might feel as though they were looking through liquid air. That's not the case in most water lakes. But water's opacity isn't just due to pollution, it's also the result of a natural characteristic of water, which turns out to be vital for life on Earth. In this picture, it's water. We're familiar with the properties of water. Here we have a liquid that looks like water, but it's not. This is a hydrocarbon. This is analogous to the liquid methane on Titan. They look the same, but they have very different chemical properties. To show the difference between these two liquids, I'm gonna take some crackers kind of things that we eat, starch, sugars, salt. And I'm gonna put it in the liquids. So now we've got crackers in the water. And I'm gonna take a set of crackers, the same number of crackers, and I'm gonna put them in our liquid hydrocarbon. Because water dissolves things so well, it's considered a powerful solvent. Methane, on the other hand, can't dissolve other materials as effectively. Look at these crackers coming out cracker is still as crisp as when we put it in. This is not a very good solvent. Water's dissolving power comes from its molecular structure. A water molecule is H2O, which means two hydrogens on an oxygen. And if you just think about the shape of the molecule, you've got your oxygen and two little hydrogens on one end. This structure means that one end of the water molecule has a positive charge and the other has a negative charge. So the little water molecules are like little magnets going around, stirring things up, repelling some things, attracting other things. By contrast, methane is a weak solvent. Methane is a carbon with four hydrogens on all sides. It's even, it has no polarity. It won't break up other molecules. Since water dissolves what it contacts, it can turn itself into a rich and sometimes murky soup. 
So here in water, organisms that have evolved to live in a rich soup like that, they're gonna be small and compact. And that's what we see on Earth. Microorganisms are small and compact. They can get their nutrients from the water. But methane could be an appealing liquid for a different kind of life form. Imagine an organism on Titan looking at Earth and seeing the liquid water. It would just be appalled that anything would want to live in such a reactive, hot, aggressive liquid. And it would think, geez, that can't be life on Earth. The liquid there is much too difficult to manage. Any alien visitors might immediately be drawn to Titan or Earth because liquids flow right on the surface. Over 300 million trillion gallons of water slosh around on Earth alone. But that might not impress interstellar travelers very much because none of Earth's seven seas are the biggest or deepest oceans, even in our solar system. Jupiter, the fifth planet from the sun, conceals an immense and bizarre liquid sea beneath its mysterious clouds. Reaching this liquid would require a spacecraft far beyond the limits of modern technology. It would have to somehow withstand incredible pressures and more importantly, be able to stand up under temperatures that are much hotter than the surface of the sun. At 1,400 times the volume of Earth, this giant planet is mostly made up of hydrogen and helium gas. But miles and miles beneath those clouds, there's a point where the weight of that atmosphere gets so intense, gas turns into liquid. Lots and lots of liquid. The journey to the liquid begins at the outer edge of Jupiter's atmosphere, where the air pressure is close to what we experience on Earth's surface. Diving into Jupiter would be an amazing experience. First, you'd go through all these upper cloud layers where there's ammonia and methane and other compounds. They're really colorful and swirly, lots of storms. The explosion of color indicates a strange brew of chemicals mixed in the hydrogen and helium. Because there's a lot of different sulfur uh, compounds in the atmosphere of Jupiter. So as you fall down through the upper layers of Jupiter, you would have the smell of rotten eggs. So a trip to Jupiter starts off in an unpleasant way. Just like passengers on a commercial jet descending from high altitudes, Passengers on a spacecraft descending into Jupiter's atmosphere would feel pressure on their ears. If you go deeper into the interior of a planet, the densities become higher, the pressures become higher, the gas is more compressed. That's similar to what we have here on Earth. Way up in our atmosphere, the densities and the pressures are low. As you go farther down, they increase. After descending for 13,000 miles, it's dark because sunlight can't penetrate through so much matter. At last, the darkness lifts. Light streaming from Jupiter's ocean lies just below. You don't splash down onto the uh, sort of the liquid ocean of Jupiter in the same way that you splash down on Earth. It's much more like you're going through a steam that becomes denser and denser and denser until it's indistinguishable from a very, very hot liquid. The liquid is hydrogen. This steamy sea, stretching from horizon to horizon, is what passes for the surface of Jupiter. It may seem unthinkable, but this liquid hydrogen ocean is floating above another, even more bizarre liquid below it. Liquids aren't easy to find on worlds outside of our own. They often take forms we can't imagine on Earth. And that's the case with Jupiter's hydrogen ocean. Strange as it may seem, the most abundant liquid in the universe is liquid hydrogen. Now, in fact, in some ways, that's not so strange. Hydrogen is by far the most abundant element in the universe. 